Welcome back to the tiny lab, everybody. Today, we're going to prove that our ventilation system works perfectly. This place is super airtight. And so everything we do, drawing air out, putting air in, results in strange pressure imbalances and all kinds of airflow difficulties and challenges, just like in every new house so that we want to make sure that everything works the way that it was designed to, and for that you need testing. Big thanks to three people who helped design this ventilation system in the tiny lab. One, Lou Harriman. He's a dehumidification expert. He's written lots of books on how to dry houses and make sure that buildings stay at the right moisture levels. Really, really important. Also, Brett Singer from Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratories. They do a lot of research on kitchen exhausts, and also Jeremiah Bollinger from Brown. We're gonna start at our kitchen. This is a gas stove, and for this reason, we're going to need to have a very serious exhaust system. Even if this was electric, we would still be creating moisture as a part of a cooking process, so you'd still want to have an exhaust hood over this. But for this situation, because we're using gas, every single time we cook, we are also making carbon monoxide. So we have a couple things. First of all, I want to make sure that all of this air gets outside, and for that I'm going to run a test. Secondly, I have over here a Defender low-level carbon monoxide monitor. That is making sure that no one in this house is going to be exposed to anything more than nine parts per million. And that's really important. Not what you're buying at the home improvement stores when you spend 15 bucks. So first off, the fan is here. This is the exhaust system. Now, this is the pressure inside the tiny lab with reference to outside the bottom number here. And we can see that it's slightly pressurized right now. That's because there's a little bit of wind outside. Uh, zero is what we're generally looking for. Now, when I turn on my exhaust fan, number one, you can see that this number starts to spike downwards pretty significantly, negative 16, 18. Now it's gonna start dropping because right now there is another vent at the bottom of that wall that has a mechanical duct that opens every time it senses that there's airflow going through the exhaust hood. Now, you can see that it's dropping uh, to a level where we're happy with. This is what it should sound like when you run your kitchen exhaust hood. I can have a whispered conversation in my house. This is what most people do and what most people are buying. And you can see when we do this that I am massively depressurizing my house. I basically have my house under blower door conditions all the time. And I use this fan every single time we cook. It is so, so important. Not just when I burn something. So you want to make sure that this actually works. Now, first thing is we can demonstrate with dry ice. And thanks to Ian Miner for going out and uh, spending some time getting some dry ice for us. That these holes in the side are actually functional. They are bringing the air up and it's all blowing out here. So there is a sheet of air that's coming this way, and it's actually rising up. Now, because the carbon dioxide that's coming off of this is cold, it's not going where we want to see it going. So we're going to use an actual hot smoke. This is a $12 smoke pen, and I can essentially just get it burning, blow it out. You could use a candle for this as well. And I can demonstrate that on low which is where I want to be using it so that I can speak over the sound of this fan, all of everything that's happening on top of the stove is going outside. I can come out further and prove that this is actually still going out through the exhaust hood, even though it's not technically on top of the stove. So you can demonstrate that this works or does not work with a $12 test. Wouldn't you like to know whether your big, expensive, chrome-finished, glass-topped exhaust hood actually pulls the cooking gases to outside? Now you know how to find out. Now that we've proven the house is safe from contaminants that are going to poison us, we want to talk big scale about pressure. This is the main room. This is where all of the air from the ventilation system, the HRV or the ERV, it stands for Energy Recovery Ventilator or Heat Recovery Ventilator, gets supplied to. And then in there, in the bathroom, is where all of the air in the house is being exhausted from. These slots ensure that when the door is closed, all of the air is going into the bathroom from this room. If the door is open, there could be some mixing. So if we're taking a shower, really important to keep the door closed so that all of the air is going through these two slots, picking up the moisture in the bathroom and going out. So once we go inside, 
through our shoji door, we're going to be able to test. This is the Dwyer uh, gauge that we're going to be using. It's all Wi-Fi. This is the air quality test kit. Uh, brilliant stuff that they've got going. This is all wireless, Bluetooth activated. So this is our Bluetooth bridge, and I'm going to connect that to myself. Stay hands-free. I have a large vein anemometer, and I have a hot wire anemometer and I'm going to be able to test the two fans that are in the bathroom with these. So the first thing that we want to do is I want to describe to you how our toilet works. The composting toilet is designed to be airtight so that air isn't coming out, but you also want to make sure that there's an active suction on it. So it's also located conveniently right next to our litter box, which is actually in use right now by one of our cats. Uh, so this litter box is right at the end of the ventilation line so that it's being sucked on by the toilet fan. And then all of this air is going out through this hose and to the exhaust side of the house, which is the back of the house. It's the passenger side. So I want to know how much air is actually going into the toilet. And to do that, I can detach the hose and test the airflow across the hose. And I can see that there is approximately 260 feet per minute because this is an inch and a half diameter hose, we know that that equals out to about three cubic feet per minute. That sounds like just a tiny bit, but when you think about a cubic foot of air and going into a tiny hole in the side of a toilet, three per minute is actually kind of a lot for just what we're trying to do, which is just make sure that no air comes out of here. So this actually smells better than your toilet does at home. The other thing in this bathroom is the exhaust fan. Now the exhaust fan's job in any bathroom is to exhaust moisture. So the only place that is for an exhaust fan is over the shower. And as you can see, ours is right here. That's where all of the air that's leaving the tiny lab is going out through that one hole. So we want to make sure that this actually works. And I can measure the exact feet per minute and convert it into the cubic feet per minute of actual airflow and prove that the house is actually losing the stalest air in the house, which is coming past the kitchen past the bathroom, picking up all the moisture and contaminants, going outside. Now, once all that stale air goes out and into the Brone ERV HRV, it's rubbing up against the incoming airstream, which is for fresh air. And that is coming through this soffit, which is that walnut darkened uh, cabinet there, and coming out there and down here in my bedroom. So I want to be able to measure both of those airstreams as well. Airstream number one, it's coming off of the main trunk line, and I can measure the exact airflow, and if I want to affect the difference between this airflow and the one downstairs, I have this hatch that lets me into the damper, and it's very important to always install damper so I can increase the speed of air and the amount of air coming out of this one as opposed to the one at the bottom, or I can change the relationship in favor of the bedroom downstairs. And to make sure that we get fresh air in the bedroom, which is where we spend most of our time, we have a supply that's coming down through there, and I can measure that as well. And I have proven that all of us are going to actually get fresh oxygen throughout the night. Now, let's take a look at that ERV HRV. Now, the outgoing stale air, incoming fresh air, are being rubbed up against each other inside of this box. There is a core in here that takes the two streams of air and runs them this way and that way through one object, essentially, that has holes in it the two different directions. This one is made out of plastic, and this is called an HRV, heat recovery ventilator, because it only transfers the heat, the temperature of the two streams of air. That means that on a 90 degree day, when I've got 70 degree nice air conditioned air inside, I'm not bringing in 90 degree air that's really hot and humid. I'm bringing more like 80 degrees in. That's much better. Uh, now, what I have inside of there right now is the ERV core, the enthalpy recovery ventilator. That recovers both the temperature and the humidity. So when I'm bringing that 90 degree, 90% 90 relative humidity inside, I can actually turn the humidity and the temperature back around and send them back out. That's what I want. So I can actually tell also that these two streams of air, the incoming fresh air and the outgoing stale air, are pressure balanced. And this is another important step of every ventilation system. You want to not just test the air flows, balance the pressures, make sure that the duct system that you're feeding the air into isn't providing so much back pressure that it hurts the fan and it makes it hard to do its job. So 
That's why all of these ducts run nice and straight. They are all insulated because we have no idea what temperature it's gonna be inside this mechanical shed. It happens to be a room that's just attached to my house, has nothing to do with my house. So I wanted to just make sure that I had protected against all possible condensation issues, which is why they're all insulated. In your basement, there would generally only be two that were insulated. So that is a rundown of the entire ventilation system on the Tiny Lab. I hope that this has made things clear for you. This is the fourth ventilation system that we designed for the Tiny Lab. So know that it is complicated, even for people like us who think about this all the time. If you need any help with your own tiny house build or normal house build, we do consulting on the building science and performance end of things. I hope that you subscribe to the channel, like our Facebook page, come and see the Tiny Lab for yourself and feel what it feels like, smell what it smells like. It's awesome in here. Uh, go to proofispossible.com for that and tune in next time.